HTM chat time with Ryan. You have to say it like, HTM chat time with Rhyolite. Like Stuart Smalley. Does anybody remember Stuart Smalley? What was the name of his show? Um, motiva Daily Motivation or something like that? Daily Inspiration or something like that with Stuart Smalley. It was Al Franken. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. That's the type of show I want. This like a Stuart Smalley show. That would be fun. Okay. <clears throat> Stuart Smalley was really calming, like Bob Ross, but then he would go on these downward spirals of self-destruction and just tear himself down in front of the camera. And then like, <sighs> come back up and motivate himself back up. It was really funny. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm gonna do first? I am, um, so my plan today, <sighs> my plan today is do, oh, let me, I'm just gonna post on the forum here. You guys can watch this if you want. <clears throat> I'm still trying to figure out like exactly where all my windows should be. <laughs> And I'm still trying to trust that the broadcast looks okay and that like the buttons that I'm pushing are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I'm not like looking constantly at, excuse me, the output window. Um, I don't know what you guys are staring at right now, but it's probably nothing interesting, is it? Uh, so with our building HTM system stuff we're gonna do, I've, got, I've come a long way with this. So this, I'm pretty happy uh, with where I'm at right now and it is with react and it works and uh, So we're this this something doesn't work. I'll, I'll, we'll figure that out in a moment in a moment um, When I get to it, but for right now, I'm gonna go. Let's do forum I don't think much was happening on the forum that I haven't responded to But I want to look at the forums real quick and then go to my Trello board I was going to clean up my Trello board a little bit for this Building HTM Systems project. That's what I'm going to do right now. And um, while I'm doing it, I might as well open up live stream chat if anybody wants to jump in. I'm going to put my headphones on so you guys won't hear any of the musics I'm listening to. That makes it better for voice chat. And I'm just open for chat, and I'm going to be working on um, a couple of short things, and then we'll talk about agency, and we'll do some fun drawing stuff. Uh, okay. Um, so, I don't even know if I need to do anything to this right now. I just wanted to review it. Uh, so, this is sort of my planning board for building HTM systems. And uh, so I've got some of these just to brainstorm, like uh, I'm not sure if I want to do them or not, but it's like if you have an idea, you can throw it in there and we'll decide, we can talk about whether we actually want to do them. These are things that I'm pretty sure I want to do. Like this, I know that's just a, still a brainstorm. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, um, which is create a meta class for a diagram. <laughs> Need a haircut. <laughs> um, so that's a sort of clean I'm up and talking about doing. Convert the code in simple HTML to CoffeeScript. I still want to do that. I'm not ready to do it yet. It's just, it's, it'll be a big project and I want to make a little bit more progress past where, I want to get at least where I got. Eh, I don't even know if I want to do it. <laughs> Let's put this back in frames. I'm not sure if I want to do that or not. Okay, so we're cleaning up. To do favicon, definitely. Grunt work. Uh, but this should be easy. I wonder if I can create a new label like newbie or easy. Easy. Let's create it easy and make it green. Then we'll change the feature. What is feature? Feature is sort of, I don't think I have any features, do I? What did I do? Feature, yeah, let's delete the feature. I don't think I had any. I'm gonna make that easy. 
So we got some easy grunt work for favicon, and that's basically just come up with favicon. I mean, you can take this, I don't know what image to use, but even if it's a blank, at least it'll keep the error from coming up. <laughs> um, consistent diagram styling pattern. This is a brainstorm. I, I mean, that's something to think about, really. Um, what kind of smart stuff is hat? Well, so this is sort of my casual part of the show. <laughs> I'll probably be streaming for three or four hours today working on tech stuff, but right now I'm sort of just, I like to call this HTM chat time with Rhyolite. And um, I'm just going over some of, the ta uh, some of the planning stuff, not really doing technical engineering work. I'm gonna do some forum Q&A on HTM forum. And then I'm going to talk about, age, you know, we, let's talk about agency and transfer now because that's fun and we have a lot of viewers here and it's a neat thought experiment to do. So let's see if I can get, this is my iPad screen. I like to draw on it. So bear with me here. Let's talk about agency. Oh, what happened? Too many cords. Okay. So. I, I brought this idea up um, on Twitter. I wonder if I should post that or not. Uh, where did I do it? Here we go. I'll put this in chat. I can't. So I was just presenting this little thought experiment and I'm just gonna walk through that. And so you don't have to read that. Um, if I can get the thing back up. So, so you don't have to read it. So let's say you've got an agent. Let's say you have an environment. Boop, 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 boop. Just a 2D environment. And then we've got an agent. This is like center of the agent or whatever. And this agent has some sensors. It's got like little legs. I don't know. It has some way to interact with the environment. We can make them simple. Something like that. And let's make him a little, oh, come on. Small him down a little. And say this guy, so what, what, what an agent wants to do, <clears throat> you have like this natural curiosity, right? I think, I think life forms have this natural curiosity that they're just pre-programmed with, I don't know, but there's, they have an incentive to explore. So, so what you could do is program Somehow, if you can imagine an agent having a representation of space that it builds over time, which is what we talk about, you know, um, if you can program random movements through the space, right, and, and then you can start to get a sense of the space. And, and if you make it a goal, if you added a system to try and have goals and rewards in this, and you made it a goal, like it felt pleasing, it was good to explore more space, right? It's good for this thing. It feels good. It gets a reward when it, re when it explores more space. So over time, you know, your representation of space starts out small and then you bounce around and then you bounce, bounce, bounce. And then you're like, oh, I like exploring. I like exploring. Let's go all over the place. Boom. And then you've learned the whole space, right? <laughs> so now let's say that this agent that we've just has totally like learned its environment, right? Um, and we take that agent and we move it, right? We let's move it to let's let's move it to another environment. Thanks for the for the follow, up, Brandon. Um, I'm talking about agency and identity right now. And so let's say we have another environment over here. Let's say it's the exact same environment, right? Okay, so I'm gonna copy this and paste it over here. Let's make a little let's make a little smaller, so my point gets across. Okay, it does, it, it, it's irrelevant exactly. But, so let's say we take this agent over here and we, 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 we move him to a new environment, right? So we're now we're in a new environment. But we say, hey, look, you don't get these sensors anymore. You've got a different sensor setup. We're gonna, we're gonna give you, you're gonna be like on a, on a pyramid Right, and it's gonna have wheels and it's gonna be able to go that way and that way, the wheels underneath of it. And your sensors are gonna be like, there's an IR sensor over here and there's a camera over here and there's a LiDAR, I don't know. 
but but the point being that your your what you used to be that like robot or the uh, this thing oh shoot I lost the the original one but the other the, the thing you used to be with the spider legs you left that behind when that sensor set like everything that you learned everything you you learned as a spider in this world once once you detach the agent even the intelligent system the model because this thing has a model of the world right you move that model over here it loses everything it loses this whole this i mean it still exists it can still have a representation of that but now you've got this new sensor set over here so while this guy let's make him a little bit smaller too so we can so while he he can when he bounces around like his his uh goal could still be the same thing to explore right and in the last environment once you learn a little bit of space you get better at it and you're like oh i know how to explore you would assume you could transfer the knowledge of space from the first environment to the second but because we've moved to another sensor set this guy has to relearn everything he can't apply any like um he can't apply this knowledge this doesn't apply he has to build up over time just like we did he has to build up by like bouncing around randomly and then being like oh i realize i can explore this is how you explore blah, blah, blah. and he has to learn that up entirely in a different way and these representations are not compatible right they're incompatible <laughs> it's a hard thing to understand i think when you're thinking about intelligent systems and a lot of people brainstorm about the idea of like brain transfer right and they say how will <clears throat> when can i upload my brain to a computer and and be able to like you know wake up in an android body or something right at some point in the future first of all that's that, w that wouldn't be you at all whatever wakes up in that android body would not be you it would it would i don't know what what it would be <laughs> but it's not you <laughs> and the 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 way that you would get this transfer to work would would be to um like a really detailed associative map of a knowledge of this sensor set versus this sensor set and some really really detailed uh information about how to translate knowledge learned using one sensor set versus knowledge learned using a different sensor set. Hey, the Michael Jolly, the man himself. I've, I've watched your stream before. Thanks for following. I appreciate it. Um, it's not even if there was a continuation of conscious experience, not even if there were even not talking about consciousness at all. Consciousness doesn't have anything to do with this problem. This is a simple problem of intelligence, of an intelligent system learning a space here and then being detached from its sensor set. That's the thing, when, you, when an intelligent system builds up a model of reality, it has to use some type of sensor set to do that. And the model that it creates is directly attached to that sensor set. It cannot be detached from that. So, I mean, this being said, you could certainly have an agent over here with the spider legs that learns an environment just like we did and then you put it in a completely different environment and you give it the same spider legs it will know how to explore right so so in this case if this agent was stupid at first and it didn't realize what space was and it's just randomly moving and we're rewarding it for exploration okay but after a while it'll realize oh this is how i move through space and it'll it'll figure out how to explore space right in this case, if we move this guy to another to a, another environment with the same sensor set, um, let's let's make this even more clear that what we're doing. Um, I want this. If we move this guy to another environment, bear with me here. Boop. All right, so it's the exact same, the exact same one, and he's going to immediately apply his knowledge of space that he learned using his sensors in the previous environment and be like, oh, I need to maximize space exploration, right? So it'll know how to achieve its goal 
much faster because it already has learned about space. And this brain transfer is up here because I'm telling you it's really, 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 really way, way far distant in the future and I don't even know if it's possible. And if it were to happen, it would not be you, so. <laughs> um, uh, Nick Neal says, I agree, but man, I've had that chat so many times <laughs> about consciousness. I still, I don't, I don't think any of this has to do with consciousness. Uh, consciousness, I feel like you can have the, the discussion about com consciousness almost orthogonally to intelligence. Um, you don't have that here in Alabama. <laughs> oh man, let's, I, I'm from Missouri. I'm from the Midwest. So I am empathetic. Um, okay, so that was my discussion I wanted to have. That was based off of this. It was based off a tweet, a tweet thread um, that I did yesterday. And uh, uh, we're gonna go back to reviewing my Trello board, which is so much more exciting than drawing, unless someone has a, see I, saw, I thought I could also do the whole art Twitch thing, you know, and start drawing on, uh, drawing on, on my iPad now. M Mr. Mr. I don't know how to say your name, but treat. Yes, you have a question. You may ask a question anytime. We this is HTM chat time with Rhyolite. That's what you're watching. So please feel free to ask a question. I just have a few things to work on in the background, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm cleaning up my Trello Trello board for a project called Building HTM Systems. That's another thing. I also have to do. I hate, I hate to do this live on Twitch, but I'm gonna I'm gonna edit a couple things. <clears throat> um, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this right here. As far as I know. So my panels are like way out of. This thing's way out of date. Uh, every Thursday. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Sometimes, some days I'll be live coding. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Uh, my opinion on consciousness, um, I believe it is a thing. Oh, how it emerges? Yeah, I think consciousness is sort of an emergent property. Um, I think there's levels of consciousness. I think uh, some things are more conscious than others. And that, I think that has something to do with how much introspection you can do you know because one of the first things you have to do to be conscious i think okay oh, now you're getting me off on a, <laughs> on a tangent here one of the first things you have to do to call yourself conscious is to understand there is a self or that there is a separation between self and reality i think that get it may be the first spark of consciousness to understand that your movements affect yourself and sometimes reality, right? And there's a line there. I mean, I can draw the line right here, you know, that my movements have a direct effect on reality around me. I'm affecting reality around me. I can tear my office up, I can throw things out the window, whatever. Um, so that would be the first tenet of consciousness was, I think, is to um, understand how the movement of self affects reality. So in that case, under that definition, I would say like most animals are conscious. Um, but that's this is my definition, right? That's just like, but and that's like the very first level of consciousness. And that's not to say that that's special, right? That's not special. <laughs> um, I think some people put a special meaning on like the word conscious, but it's a spectrum. It's a huge spectrum. So I think that that little that first point where you can separate self from reality, that's not the line. There's not a line to draw there. That's just, I think the first, that's just the first step on a long journey towards being very conscious, you know, like extreme, like, like human being type of consciousness where we have deep introspection not only on ourselves but on our society and civilization etc like that so there's this broad spectrum of consciousness that i think is starts by defining being able to define self from not self uh, yeah it, it that's the thing go look up consciousness and you're going to find 
10 different definitions of it. That's just my, how I think of it. I mean, how do we decide how to define our, what we are? It's, um, it's very hard to nail down. So I don't like to discuss it. That's one of the reasons I don't like to discuss it. Now, intelligence, I feel like is more tangible and that's something that we can, uh, we can work with. We can start putting words to, and that's why I like to talk about agency and the whole thought experiment I just did. Cause I think intel an intelligent thing, um, where am I going here? <laughs> an intelligent thing has to have agency in its, in its environment, you know, but this is a different definition than consciousness. All right. It's not, it's not like they, one leads to the other. It's like that potentially like anyway, uh, you have to have agency to be an intelligent thing, which means you have to be able to move and sense, you know, reality. Uh, and I think that intelligence for us, for me to define intelligence, I think you have to say an intelligent thing creates a version of reality, like a model of reality. And it, and it has a model of reality it can call on to decide where, how it moves essentially. Um, I'm not feeling masochistic enough to look up consciousness at the moment. Yeah, I'm here for the intelligence, not the consciousness. <laughs> there's a, there's some, fr when you get into the study of consciousness, there's a big fringe there of very interesting ideas that not, okay, not interesting, interesting because they're so off the wall, right? <laughs> not interesting, meaning that I need to study that, but more like weird. Okay. So we're not going to go there. We're not going to get metaphysical. We're going to stick in the world of consciousness. Um, SJ says primates have a lot of social intelligence too. Yeah, they do. Very good short-term memory. Uh, they don't have our future planning though. If you think about the prefrontal cortex, you know that's that's one of the things that I think gives us as humans the ability to abstract so much because we have this huge section of the cortex that we can of the neocortex that we can use to plan and and it's not directly dedicated to processing sensory input like it's it's the it, the your brain has somehow invaded that space so that it can it can create things right which is amazing that's the amazing part um to, uh, thanks for the compliment brandon um I like use of the word model to describe the way we interact with and make decisions in the world Model is an extremely overused term. Hey, Mark Brown. Uh, model is super overused. You know, but I noticed that as soon as I got into software engineering, like everything has a model. Every, every framework has a model. <laughs> every software programming paradigm at some point has a model. It's like, it's just, that's where your data is. That's where you go and see what's the state of things, you know? So a model is super generic. But at the same time, it's exactly what we're talking about. It's where do you go to find out what the state of things is? Where do you store the state of things? You store it in, in the model. And, and in our, you know, the sensory motor model that we think of with, with movement and, and HTM and sensory, sensory streams, temporal sensory streams, it's a model that we build over time by moving through space. Um, I'm not going to talk about free will. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Let me finish this thing up and, uh, now you're like hey Mark, did you, did you see my, my drawings of, uh, I drew out the agency thing. Free Willy. Like <laughs> okay. Like that was annoying. Uh, so I just changed Thursdays to some days. Join me and help out. I'm just doing um, some chat right now, Mark, and we'll get, oh, I can add the past episodes too. Let me add the link to past episodes of this. This is the most- ah! Don't. Building HTM system series. This is the most. You guys know how I feel about that. Okay. I'm just doing a little bit of maintenance, just a little housekeeping uh, on the on the Twitch thing. So, so you guys know, this is the main project I'm I'm working on. 
building HTM systems. And this is the repository that has all the deets in the readme. So if anybody wants to help out with this, this is this place to go. All right. And this is the Trello board, which is in the deets in the readme. Oh yeah, here's the question from uh, Miss Tree Treat. Uh, sorry, I did. I probably did miss your question. Wondering what sorts of evidence would be needed to substantiate the thousand brains theory. Um, personally, I'm very interested in stereotactic EEG. Um, well, the best. I think the best. The best evidence. So, if you missed the thousand. The idea of the thousand brains theory is that you're representing whatever you're observing in, in space, you're representing in all parts of your brain and all cortical columns. Each cortical column has a representation of that object and they share their representations through lateral connections. That's the basically the theory. Okay, so it's the theory that the, the idea of hierarchy when you're, when you're doing object recognition, it's not so much that the, the, the lowest layers in the hierarchy are doing very simple feature detection and passing up collections of those up which are putting them together into bigger objects and bigger objects and bigger objects and you have to go all the way up the hierarchy to get something like a cup, like something that you can label. So that goes higher up the hierarchy. Uh, the thousand brains theory, which is Numenta's theory that we're pushing on that we think is going on in the cortex is that this object recognition is happening in every cortical column, no matter what level of the hierarchy it is. So what, when you're observing a cup, there, it's not like um, a construction of, of feature extracted extracted features going up a hierarchy it's that even the lowest levels of the hierarchy are guessing what this is is it a cup is it my cup it, like they're they're trying to explicitly de define the object in the world at all times so um yeah yeah but what mark said so it adds if you have know the idea of cortical columns it's t it's talking about the lateral connections between them so that they can all share and if you add that lateral connectivity uh then you get this idea that all of them are using their own input, doing the, creating their object model using, and we think they're using you know locations and space using grid cell type type of techniques and stuff. Um, so that is it at a, in a nutshell. Uh, so the evidence that I'd like to see, uh, something came about, came out about this recently that I thought was interesting. Uh, and I and I posted it on the forum. Um, what was it called? It was about GANs. And it was... Uh, where was it? I'm looking for it right here. Latest post, GANs. It had something about GAN. Well, now I don't remember where it was. Uh... Okay, hold on. I know I have an email about it, so I have to check my email. Just a moment. Research, because it was it was interesting enough that I emailed it to research, and here it is. No, no, that's not it either. <laughs> Just a moment. There it is. So sorry, so sorry. Here it come, it's coming into chat right now, and it was that, and here is the thing. Um, uh, so this was this is an interesting paper. If you want to, this is the type of evidence that I wanted to see. That I want to see. Um, what I thought this quote I really picked up on all this happening in a in a part of the brain that people used to think cared about much lower level information. So I I was hoping that meant V1. But apparently it does not mean V1. So I would like to see evidence of object sort of classification or object representation happening um, at all levels of the hierarchy. So in V1 uh, through V4, I, I would like something like this to be able to identify like dis distinct object representations, not just like um, feature extraction. So if we can see at those lower levels that not just feature extraction is happening, that it's full on object representation. So if we can see evidence like is shown in this video and this paper at, at those levels, that would make me happy. I mean, that would be pretty nice, right? Um, uh, 
Thousand Brains theory could be interesting to look into the context of visual agnosis or to loosen Jace. Yeah, I know, I know enough about them. It's really super interesting, but I'd like to see if it compares. My, my whole take on some of the, like, how does the brain work on under this influence or that influence, I think we should focus on how the brain works on not being under anything, any influence or like not hallucinating or not. I understand that can inform us about maybe what type, what mechanisms are happening. Like if you apply this molecule, it causes this thing to happen and then you think differently, you know, like that might be an entrance into, that might be a clue and like what to research. Um, but it's, uh, but I'm not really researching any of that type of stuff. So. Um, I missed some of this. Uh, so would picking up grid-like activity across the cortex be evidence? No, we've already seen that. Um, opinions vary on how, that's evidence, but it's not, it's not conclusive. You know, just, just because that's happening doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, even, I mean, there's still even people that are um, skeptical that grid cells have anything to do with spatial processing. You know, that somebody, uh, some camps still say that they could be, it could be due to other things. They say denoising. I don't know. I, I didn't find. I think it probably has to do with spatial processing, but it really seems to point that direction. It doesn't seem like it's just we're just accidentally finding that property. It, it that mechanism that that creates the spatial mapping of space. Now that could be a mechanism that does other things too, right? It it could uh, it could be used in other ways. It could be used for denoising as well. I mean, it's a it's a pretty general. The grittiness aspect of it is, is like, it's brilliant, it's elegant, it's beautiful, right? It's like beautiful math, you know, when you think about it. It's like the beautiful application of math that biology has done. And it may be used for more than just mapping space, right? It could be. Um, I don't see why not. Uh, okay. I don't remember where I was. Uh, Trying to catch up. Opi oh, Mark says opinions vary on how much object recognition is done in each column. Some think it's fractional object recognition, but that's just me and not really Nementa. Yeah, Mark. Mark and Nementa have uh, differing opinions on on this. And there's and but we still welcome him in our, into our community. If you guys don't totally agree with what the Nementa position is on anything, that's no reason to go away. Our forums um, are really totally friendly. Um, Mark Browns has been a really well-respected member of our forum and he's got like a core disagreement with us and that's totally fine. We, we discuss it live, um, we discuss it on the forum, He'll sometimes we have hangouts and we, we discuss this type of thing. It's an intellectual, intellectual discussion is welcome. We do, we do not push away opposing opinions. Um, I hope nobody thinks that. Um, but yeah, the, the forum's a nice place. <laughs> to uh, get involved in these type of thoughts. And that is forum. Let me do this. Forum, if you want to see the link to it, there it is. Um, what else have I missed? Grid cells have been detected in several places in the cortex, mostly uh, hub areas. There are place cells in V1. Recently discovered. Hey, if you can uh, post a link to that, but I, I missed that. If there are place cells in V1, that would be cool. Um, Oh yeah, someone other asked. <laughs> Found in a BCI paradigm in monkeys. Um, oh, that's interesting. I may have heard about that. I think I know about that. I think um, I think I've seen that paper. Is it the one where they're playing a video game? So I remember a, an interesting paper about. Is this the one? Place cell-like activity in primary sensory premotor during monkey whole body navigation. I think this is. Oh, no, 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 this is not it. All right, well, I'll look in. I'm not gonna read a paper live on the on the stream, but I'm gonna keep this open and we'll have, we'll have a look at it. Um, you're saying you don't know what BCI is, brain control interface, or brain, isn't that it, brain control? It's, a, it's a, like something that attaches to your brain to control something. Um, and like open BCI is one that I've had experience with before we've played around with, uh, but there's a bunch of them now. You, you remember when they used to have those like Jedi toys that you'd, you'd put something on your head and they would concentrate really hard and this ping pong ball will float up in the air. <laughs> it 
it's easy to do to create something like that that just responds to like blood flow in certain ways that if you're concentrating on on something like it's probably responding more to the muscles you know that you're, that, than your brain but um anyway uh yeah uh monkeys in a wheelchair hi Turo. i think i saw your blog and this is was looked like an interesting website right Turo kronberg i think i saw you on twitter and i looked at your blog and i th saw, thought you had some interesting thoughts have you thought much about how spatial relationships get used as metaphors for more complex non-physical kinds of thinking all the time i think about that i think I think about how I represent ideas and how they're related to other ideas and how some ideas feel similar to others because they just fit together and because they're complementary in some ways. I think that the better you can map abstract ideas to physical sensations, the better you can understand them. The better you can create analogies to things that you know how to interact with in the world, the better you understand them. That's how our brain works. So if if we can take a process and apply an analogy that links it to sensory experience, we can understand that process better. I think all these things are done in location-based space in our, in our minds, like abstract location-based space. So yes, I think about that a lot. Uh, what does the gravity vector of head direction cells mean in the abstract space? Just a reference vector that HD cells within a module can agree upon. Oh, this is tricky. I mean, this is, research stuff so i'm just kind of i'm not doing that research i'm just watching it just like you guys okay so uh don't take this as like the numenta's viewpoint on gravity <laughs> but i like the gravity vector idea because it's it always it makes sense to me that every object that you interact with um has a an orientation that's based on what on this force that pulls it downward. I mean, things look different upside down than they do right side up. And I think that one of the things we do as three dimension beings that move through this three dimensional space is learn that vector, that pull, right? That's one of the properties of space around us. So we have to learn that vector. And it's one of the very general things that we learn about space. It's a property of, of the space around us. Um, so I think, uh, to answer your question, uh, what does the gravity vectors of head direction cells mean in an abstract space? Um, in an abstract space, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think that they, uh, I think that they were, were sort of associating the gravity vector at, with an object orientation or a way to orient an object. So there's the, there's the orientation of, of an object like this. And then there's the orientation of your sensors as, as you intersect the object. So there's like sort of many orientations when you're thinking about an object representation. And I think the gravity vector is more about the orientation of the, of the object. Because the, I mean, you only you usually see this like this in the gravity vector straight up and down. If you see it like that, you know it's tilted. You know that's not the way it usually is. Gravity doesn't work like that. Gravity won't allow something to sit like that. It'll boom like, like that or fall over. So that's part of learning the gravity vector is how does it affect different types of objects. Um, can a reference vector that HD cells within a module can agree upon? I don't, I don't know. And in, abstra in an abstract space, I don't know. Uh, orientation could be just a property of a concept. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, you can get really low level in this. You start thinking about mathematics. I'm going to talk to Jeff about this in an upcoming podcast, the one I edited last week. And he talks a little about mathematics as an abstract conceptual space and how you can have a data space and then you apply a function to that data space and it's a transformation. It's like a movement. It's like a vector, a displacement that moves to another data space. And so you can, you can sort of associate mathematical functionality with movement through space as well. And you have to remember this space is huge. It's huge. Like even in the space you're using to represent just this can, it goes on, it's, it's, it's a huge amount of space. We've just, it goes on for a long, long way. I mean, there's, there's almost no limit to the complexity of the objects that you can 
construct in your brain because you break them down into subcomponents and you go kind of lower and lower and lower detail. Each one of those has its own object space. Each one within it has its own object space. And each one of those object spaces is the same space. It's huge. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm just like blabbering and not keeping up with chat. Um, let's see where it mentions V1 in the paper. It, uh, Donald, it does not, what paper are you talking about? If it was the one with the not place cell activity. Oh yeah, place cell activity. Yeah, if it doesn't mention V1, that would be troubling. Uh, so it really will help for computers to have movement and sensory interaction with the world. Yes, we're not gonna create intelligent non-biological systems until they have a way to move. And it doesn't have to be physical, it can be a virtual space. Um, it could move through a virtual game environment. It could, it could move through a network. It could go through nodes in the internet. It could have the web, it could be a web crawler. You know, that's, if it has the ability to make decisions and, and its decisions affect the, senses, the sensory input that it gets, it, it has the ability to be an intelligent thing if it can re create a model of its experience through time moving through space, whatever the space is, however it's defined. Um, <clears throat> yeah, organizing conceptual knowledge with humans in a grid like code, we've, we've read that. Um, trying to keep up astronauts from recognizing rotated objects. Do astronauts have trouble recognizing rotating objects? No, but I mean, you could do a thought experiment. If you, say if you could, how, how hard would it be if a picture of a guitar flashed in front of you like this? How, how quickly would your brain r recognize it versus if a guitar flashed in front of you like this? It would, you would have to, you wouldn't immediately say, oh, that's a guitar, because it, you don't usually see guitars like this unless a rock and roll guitarist is swinging it downward, right? This isn't a natural orientation for a guitar. So your brain has to almost do a little bit of a double take, like, whoa, whoa, uh, it's just a guitar turned around, you know? So I think you can do that experiment with several objects that you don't ever see, like a horse. Imagine a horse upside down. It might be a little off-putting at first because you never see feet over a horse's back. You never see a horse's feet over its back. That's crazy. That never happens in nature. You've, you've only seen that if you were, happen to be looking at a book from the other side while someone else is reading it or something like that. And in that case, you know to change the orientation because you can see that it's upside down. You know, the context provides an upside down horse for you to analyze. Uh, check on the time. Do, so I bet there is some, I mean, it doesn't take long for your brain to, to understand that something's rotated, but I think it takes a little longer. I think you have to go through a little extra cal mental calculation to get there. Yeah, it takes longer. Um, just reading through some chat, uh, talking about zero G. See you later, Mark. Have a good uh, lunch with your wife. Let's, <laughs> yes, I'm going to sign, let's get a petition going. We will get, um, we will get SpaceX to send a horse into space for science. For science. Okay. Um, so now. I think I am going to, uh. He's, he's shot enough other stuff up in the space for no reason. <laughs> watch, watch as Elon shoots his ex-mother-in-law into space. Okay, I think I'm gonna um, take a quick break. I'm gonna use the restroom. I um, might go get a quick refill of the coffee. And then we're going to start building HTM systems. So let's update my